烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. <laughs> so, okay,、uh, I opened up a can of worms by mentioning upadi. Upadi is kind of a complex, technical, difficult Sanskrit term. And、uh, a couple of comments have shown me that you know even、uh, some of our more intelligent viewers. Really haven't understood it properly, so I'm going to have to explain the whole thing, <laughs> and I'm going to have to explain it in concert with another term, visheshana, huh? Visheshana, two different sha sounds there. So visheshana and upadi are the two types of relationship. Between the subject and the object, or Brahman and Mahamaya. So we're going to go into that in detail. <laughs> I shouldn't have even mentioned it, but anyway, now that I did, I have to explain it all. You know, I, I found over the years that people don't like these technical videos. But what can I do? It's a technical subject. And if you understand it only superficially, you're guaranteed to get it wrong, and misapply it, and misunderstand the whole philosophy. So, let's look into it. In the reality, there are two categories: the subject, prakasha, and the object, prakriti. So, subject means the seer. One who is aware, the knower, and prakriti means the seen, that which is we, that object that we are aware of. So anything that we are aware of is prakriti, is maya, is that is form.、Huh? Now, of course, maya is still nothing but Brahman. But it's an overlay on Brahman. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> First, let's look at four categories of subjects. First, we have Brahman, the unconditioned, pure awareness, without an object. Then we have Ishwara, Shiva. Ishwara means the controller. Then we have a category that's called kutasta. Kutasta means the multitude, or in this particular context, means like the、uh, most prominent or the head of a whole category of many many members. So we have in this category is Paramatma or Vishnu,、uh, Mahavishnu. Or actually, Karanadakshay Vishnu, to be very, very technically precise,、uh, he's called the Super Soul. Why? Because he is the sum total of all the individual souls, the Jivas or Jivatma, and that's the fourth category. The Jivatma. I have a picture of a crowd of people here. It's not too clear, but、uh, it's a big crowd in a city coming to hear. What's her name?、Uh, Greta Thunberg. So <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> anyway, so the Jivatma, Jivatmas are a multitude of souls. They're all Atma. They're all actually Brahman. But because they're covered over by these upadis,、huh, as we'll see. They 
consider themselves individual and separate from Brahman. So that's Maya for you, huh? Okay, so the object, the prakriti, the nature, the elements, and the manifestation, and so on, is Mahamaya. Okay, we're studying her, her path now, the Sri Vidya. Sri, of course, means beautiful, but it also refers to Lakshmi. And she is the source of wealth, the source of opulence for everyone. So anyway, now we have this relationship, subject-object relationship, between Brahman and Prakriti, Mahamaya. But what, is, what are the particulars of these relationships? There are four relationships here between Mahamaya and the four categories of subject, Brahman, Ishwara, Paramatma, and Jivatma. The relationship between Mahamaya and Brahman is called Upadi, which means superimposition as a limiting adjunct. Okay, in other words, Brahman is fundamental. Brahman is the source of everything, actually is everything, nothing but consciousness. Okay, and then Mahamaya superimposes on Brahman this world, this creation, the universe and all the creatures in it, moving and non-moving. And so, because it's a superimposition, it means it's dependent on Brahman. Actually, all the other categories are dependent on Brahman. So, the thing of it is, because it's merely a superimposition, it does not change Brahman. Brahman remains always eternally the same. But this superimposition of the world, the creation, uh -huh. the manifestation, is simply uh, something that is uh, like built up like a superstructure over the foundation of Brahman. So then, what about Ishwara? The relationship between Mahamaya and Ishwara is called Visheshana, which means particularization. Huh? That's a good one, huh? Visheshana. In Visheshana, the, it is also a type of upadi. But in this case, instead of being a superimposition, the Visheshana is actually an integral part. So you have this particularization or individualization of Brahman into a particular identity, which we call Ishwara, or Paramashiva, Sadashiva. Really, technically, Sadashiva. Paramashiva is Brahman. But when Brahman becomes individual and enters into his own creation, he does so as Ishwara. And he is the consort of Mahamaya. Okay? They have an intimate relationship, a very deep relationship. No one can comprehend it, actually. But um, a very beautiful relationship in which he plays the role of the husband and she plays the role of the wife. But actually, of course, they're, <laughs> they're both Brahman and they have all this knowledge and powers that are actually incomprehensible to us. Okay, the next category then is the uh, Kutashta, Paramatma, Vishnu. And the relationship between Mahamaya and Vishnu is that Avidya becomes an Upadi, a limiting adjunct which is superimposed over Vishnu. What does this mean? Before, we had upadi as simply individualization. But now we have upadi 
as avidya. Avidya means ignorance. Vidya means knowledge, so avidya means ignorance. Ignorance of what? The real truth, the real existence. So on the level of Vishnu, especially Karna Dakshai Vishnu, in the lying on the snake of Anantashesh in the Karna ocean, causal ocean, right? He identifies with the universe. He thinks, I am responsible for the maintenance of this creation. And he's attached. <laughs> and if anybody threatens the universe, then he becomes very much engaged in solving the problems and so on. So that's why we see all these pastimes or activities of Vishnu, where he's fighting the demons and stuff like that. And sometimes Maya will help him, you know, but actually she's also creating the demons. <laughs> so it's a big drama and hard to understand but not really, if you, if you look from the uh, point of view of Shiva, of Ishwara, it's not difficult to understand because it's Leela, you see? It's pastimes. He gives, he, he creates the situation, or they create, Shiva and Shakti, create the situation where Shiva gets to be like the great hero and save everybody up to and including Vishnu <laughs> when they get in trouble. And so Maya makes sure that they get in trouble on a regular basis. <laughs> so her husband can come riding in on his bull <laughs> and save the day, right? So finally we have the Jivatmas, the Jivas, the individual living entities like you and me. And what is their relationship with Maya? In their relationship, avidya is a visheshana, a particularization, an individualization, but an also an integration of avidya, ignorance, into their very nature. That's why we don't see Brahman or Shiva or Vishnu, you know, just walking down the street, right? Even though they're present in some way, they're present everywhere, they're all pervading, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, right? That's God. But we don't perceive them directly because avidya, or ignorance, is a part of our very nature. So the whole idea of sadhana then, is to uh, decouple ourselves or distill our conscious nature from the avidya, the ignorance that both covers it and permeates it. In other words, we want to change our category from jivatma to paramatma, and then from paramatma to ishwara, and then from ishwara to brahman itself. And this is the progressive path of sadhana, which anyone can do. Everyone has the necessary equipment, which all you need is yourself. <laughs> but without the knowledge to counteract the ignorance, the avidya, that's part of the visheshana of the jivatma, then you can't make it, and that's why the guru is necessary. The guru helps by educating you, explaining all these things, and answering your questions. So I hope I see some good questions in the comments today. It's uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, Y'all, instead of going out and going to some nonsense thing <laughs> and doing a bunch of crazy stuff you'll be sorry for tomorrow, Instead, you know, watch some of these videos, especially if you haven't seen the ones leading up to this, watch, you know, the whole playlist. I'll post a link to the playlist. Uh, actually, I'll po post it right here. And uh, you can watch this series, the, um, the Big Picture, it's called. Because this gives the fundamental, high-level relationships among all the pieces 
in the worldview of the Sri Vidya. So if you want to uh, get on this path of Sri Vidya, which I highly recommend, <laughs> I'm so happy since I took this up, um, that you need this information to understand our point of view and get the benefits. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.